good snow, but guess what? Tomorrow's going to be a different story for all of us. So just winter is still here. We've had some beautiful days, but winter doesn't want to let up. Okay, for announcements, St. Mark's, the Bible study, um, they have a Bible study at uh, their church after the um, morning worship service, and then they have their thrift store open on Fridays. And then for us, we have our Bible study starting this Tuesday night at 7. And then Wednesday is the food pantry pickup. We should be back to the church by 10.45, 11 o'clock. And then social hour will be next Sunday. Um, so uh, just a reminder that we do do it the first Sunday of the month. Um, and all are welcome. And then Pastor Joy has here uh, wooden crosses, uh, prayer crosses, right? You call it? You, you know, hold them. You can hold them in your hand for prayer. So be sure to pick one up after the church service this morning, and then there's a card to go with it. So please pick that up. Any other announcements that I missed? Okay, we'll begin our morning worship service. any frivolous spending. I'm adding uh, prayer time because I uh, don't pray enough. I'm fasting meat for Lent. We're so used to bread in our diet and it's also a big weakness for me and I wanted to sacrifice something that would be hard to do. I am adding more devotional time books that are focused on the the journey of Jesus Christ during this time. Now I'm doing a bread and water fast and it has a symbolic reference of recognizing that Jesus is the bread of life. In the early church, people used the time leading up to Easter as a time of preparation for those who wanted to convert to Christianity. It was this really time of intense focus so that they can learn more about the Christian faith. And then on Easter they were baptized. I enjoy adding something for Lent. I'd just rather give up something because God gave up His only Son. Every night or during the day, I'm writing a letter to someone in my life who like challenged me or inspired me to live differently in my faith. I guess I'd rather add something, but for me, it's more about sacrifice, and I feel like I need to give something up. We put a cross up in our front yard. It's nothing big and fancy. It's just a big wooden cross to remind people. And I put a little thing over the mailbox that says, He is risen. Because there's no hard and fast rule about how to observe Lent, I think some people take the approach where, you know, you need to be more somber, you need to cut out certain luxuries in your life. Um, but I think the real question is, what space is it creating in your life to be closer to God and to do a little bit more um, self-reflection on, on your own practices and habits? It's not extremely hard until the thing that I'm giving up is put right in front of my face. I get pretty disappointed in myself if I fail. As long as I do my devotional time first thing in the morning before the rest of the world tries to run in on me, I'm pretty good. It just reminds me that even though I'm giving up something that does, I guess, mean a lot to me, that God's going to fill that in for me. It's just a, a time of heightened spirituality. All of Easter week is important, but Easter morning is just I wouldn't miss that service for anything. And so this time of Easter, whether or not you were able to really commit to the things that you said that you would do, is a time to really say, thank you God for this life that you've given me, and to continue to ask those questions about how you can be a better Christian, how you can be a better father, daughter, parent, student, brother, sister to those around you. Welcome pilgrim on the way to the cross. We are here to follow Jesus. For those who fear Christ here, <coughs> may we not turn away from the discomfort of the journey ahead. For those who feel as far from Christ as the deserts is from the ocean, 
may we find Christ in the wilderness with us. For all of us who stumble and fall in our silence, indifference, and lack of generosity, may we reach for the hand of Christ, who raises us up to continue on the journey. Pilgrims on the way, come let us worship God. We come to worship God as we learn to live inside God. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, Lord we are so tempted by everything we see, the glitz and glitter of the world, and the death rich treat schemes are placed before us. We believe that if we just have enough money, enough friends, enough power, enough safety, we will be okay. Show us how foolish we are to place our hope and trust in these things. Give us hearts for loving service in which we will find our strength, our courage, our security, our home. Amen. And we have opening hymn, hymn number 365, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. We are singing together.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. And he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please see children's time. Hey, Ez. Good morning. What a beautiful day. Jeannie, it's downright strange. It's been like spring recently. It has been a bit warm for the season. Guess what? My friend Lou and I are going to put up a lemonade stand if the weather holds. That's good, I think. But, you know, I heard that you had a difficult time with your math homework. Is it okay if I test your math? Uh, I guess so. Okay, if I have 10 glasses of lemonade and I drank nine, what would I have? A bellyache. No, I mean, how many glasses would I have left? Oh, you mean if I had 10 glasses of lemonade and you drank nine, how many would I have left? Yes. None. What? I drank the other glass. <laughs> Why did you do that? I was thirsty. Huh. So much for math. Do you like literature? It's okay. We were going to talk about the nursery rhymes at the end of the week, just for fun. But we didn't have time before school closed for the weekend. Our teacher says kids today don't have much appreciation for those. That's for sure. Well, I knew all of them by heart. The old woman in the shoe... Uh, Jack Spratt, Simple Simon, Little Miss Muffet, and many more. Say one for me. Okay. How about Miss Muffet? Okay. Shoot. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet. What's a tuffet? Well, I really don't know. Probably some sort of a hassock. Well, what's a hassock? I guess you say it's some sort of a stool. Like my TV stool? Yes, like your TV stool. Anyway, that's a dumb name. I never heard anyone with the name of Muffet. It's probably a made-up not rhyme. It was, it's probably a made-up name to rhyme with Tuffet. Poets do things like that. Why? Look, do you want to hear the rest of it or not? Yes, please. Little Miss Muffet sat on a Tuffet, eating her curds and waves. What's curds and waves? It's stuff that you get when you make cheese. The curds float around in the way. Yuck! It sounds terrible. How come I didn't ask these questions when I was her age and somebody read this stuff to me? Okay, so you wouldn't eat it. Miss Muffet loved it. Let's go on. I think the rest of it goes something like this. A great big spider sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Ha! Not me! I'm not scared of spiders. Look, as you started me thinking, I don't think that this is a very good nursery rhyme, not for today's kids anyway. It needs to be revised or brought up to date. Can I do it? Sure, go ahead. If you think you can improve on the great mind that wrote it. Hmm. 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 Come on, Ez. Oh, okay. How about this? Little Miss Rosie O'Toole sat on her TV stool, stashing her dinner away. When a great big spider sat down beside her, she bashed out its brains with her tray. Well, that's up to date, all right. You know, Esmeralda, I was thinking, what I accepted and appreciated as a child has changed. Some nursery rhymes seemed silly to you and need to be changed. But it got me to thinking about other changes in our lives. How do you mean? 
Well, not all changes are small, like nursery rhymes, but there are big changes. You mean like how we had to stay out of school because of this virus thing? Well, some children would think that was a nice thing. Some changes are hard, like always being careful to wear a mask and washing our hands often, or like losing a friend or moving to a new location, graduation or getting married or a new job. My friend Veronica, her mom and dad got a divorce. Everybody is really sad. It's so hard when you hurt inside. And my friend Ellie, her grandma's had a stroke and she can't talk. Ellie is so scared for her grandma. Wow, what a change for her. You know, or another change would be when a doctor says it's cancer. You know, it just changes your whole life. You know, Jeannie, I don't think I like big changes. They hurt too much and it's scary. As there's one thing that doesn't change. What's that? God's love for us. Yeah, I know. It's like having your best friend beside you all the time. Please believe that as he's not only a friend, but he cares and he understands. I guess lots of things are going to change as I grow up, aren't they, Jeannie? You're right. But God's love for us, it just never changes. Never? That's right. Never. Wow. It's a nice thing that there is one thing that never, ever changes. Yes. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for changes that make us grow and make us know when others hurt. May we reach out, be their friend, care, and let them know of your love. Amen. Amen. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Let's have a bow for you. Let us all go. We thanks. tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, 
Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We have started as working on the Lenten journey. As all of us know, Lenten is a time of thanks because through working on the spiritual pilgrimage to Easter, we can find what Jesus, has, Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. Our Lord defeats the power of sin and leads us to be free from them. Also, Lent is a time of reflection. We are invited to reflect on ourselves by taking a, taking a look at the areas of sin in our lives examining where we are in our relationship with God and who we should be in this world. Therefore, it is very important to focus on Jesus' public life in that his end was toward the way of passion. By looking into his life and ministry, we can restore or enrich a life of gratitude and see change in our lives. And this morning, the Gospel of Matthew brings us into Jesus' story about the 40 days in the wilderness. Right before the time in the wilderness, Jesus was baptized and God the Father's delight was made known in Jesus. This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. The wilderness has been understood as a place of preparation and waiting for God's leading. The Israelites needed to have 40 years in the wilderness to be born again as God's faithful people. Also, King David became stronger in faith through his time in the wilderness. Indeed, in the Bible, the wilderness is introduced as a place where reliance on God and trust are learned. Probably some of you have experienced times of the wilderness in the past that were very difficult but allowed you to grow, grow in faith, grow in life. Or some of you be challenged and moved by the stories of the wilderness in the Bible. In today's scripture reading, we find that there are many lessons we can learn in the wilderness. And those lessons come from the answer to the question, how did Jesus overcome the temptations he faced? The answer comes down to his relationship with God, God the Father. There is no doubt that Jesus must have heard many stories of the wilderness in the Old Testament. He was aware of the struggles the Hebrew people had encountered there. Like those people, Jesus went into a deep relationship with God the Father in the wilderness and learned to trust in God who provided all he would need to endure. And at the end of the time in the wilderness, when he was most vulnerable both physically and mentally due to hunger and isolation, temptations came at him. Temptations are around us all the time. They are everywhere, from small scale to large. Think about the temptations you face these days. What are they? Where do you find the strength to face them, fight them, and defeat them? 
Jesus knows all about the temptations we face in our everyday life. Indeed, He knows what they are like. And Satan tempts Jesus, who is hungry. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Satan comes up with a fundamental, very fundamental problem that troubled Jesus while he was fasting. A matter of bread. In other words, the problem of pain that comes from material poverty. Satan suggests an, an immediate solution, turning stones into bread. But Jesus rejects and says, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Great words. Indeed. However, the question is, is Jesus closing his eyes to the reality of pain on the earth by saying that? Here we need to keep in mind that Jesus rejects the matter of turning stones into bread rather than the matter of bread itself. Jesus refused to be a magician to deal with human suffering. Here we too are constantly hearing Satan's tempting voice to turn stones into bread. For example, religious voices about cheap grace, like believe, then you will get rich. Believe, then you will succeed. But Jesus didn't say anything like that. Faith is not like Aladdin's magic lamp. Of course, many people want to be rich. Nobody hates money. But the problem is actually coming from the wrong capitalist, capitalist reality in that people without money are mistreated. So many people make money recklessly. They are dominated by money to the extent that they abandon not only their friends but also even their family. So sad. And this is all because they listen to Satan's voice telling them to turn stones into bread. Indeed, the matter of bread is important, but having too much bread does not make us happy, we know. Because we are spiritual beings, we need spiritual bread, which is the Word of God. When we live in God's words, the matter of bread can be rightly dealt with. If we obey God's commands about sharing, caring, and living together, then we can feed not only ourselves but also the hungry without turning stones into bread magically. It is our calling indeed to live according to the word of God. Even if we eat a little less and live a little more uncomfortably, our body and mind can be enriched when we know the importance of spiritual bread. And next, Satan brings Jesus to Jerusalem, which means, which symbolizes the center of the world for Jews. He takes Jesus to the top of the Jerusalem temple and incite the Lord to jump out of there. Satan is demanding a great performance from Jesus. Like, if you show such a miracle in front of many people, all of them will follow you. <coughs> However, Jesus refused it and says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Everyone has the desire to be famous. For the younger generation these days, the number of followers on Instagram or YouTube has become the standard to decide who a person is, who he is, who she is. And we are so sad to see that, the reality. But 
an obsession with fame and honor has always been one of the greatest temptation to all human beings regardless of time and generation. And one obvious thing is the higher our name goes, the less we will care for the marginalized in the lower places. However, you should remember that Jesus always chose a lowly place from the time he was born to the time he died on the cross. But because of that, we realize that his love is wide and deep enough to save our lives. Now, Satan takes Jesus to a very high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The Bible tells us that human beings are always placed in a condition in which we are prone to contract with Satan regarding gaining power. And we read the Satan's if in his word of temptation. If. But nothing is free except for God's grace, right? When we align ourselves with Satan for power, we may come to be controlling and oppressing others to preserve that power in us. And with that power, we can't make this world a beautiful and peaceful world. We can't make, we can't build God's kingdom on earth. When we pass through times like the wilderness in life, we sometimes experience temptations from Satan either. He might deceive us, whispering like, more money, more fame, and more power are all you need now. But this is an obvious lie. Because we have God. We should focus on how Jesus resist, resisted Satan's temptations. And Jesus put his relationship with the God of love over a relationship with possession, prestige, and power. Jesus would own would go on to perform many miracles of power, but not for show or his own benefit. Rather, Jesus used his power for the purpose of sharing God's love and compassion with God's people. Therefore, whenever we go to times of ex examination in the wilderness, we need to remember the love of God that sustains us. That is our priority. Indeed, we can remember that God has promised to forgive our sins through Jesus Christ. Yes, He walked to the way of the cross and died for our sins. Indeed, we are called to remember that Jesus, the embodiment of God's living love, is empathizing with us in every situation of life. Our Lord, mourning with us, mourning, will neither leave us alone nor forsake us. His redeeming love is always with us, sustaining us when we are vulnerable. Lent is a period of deep meditation of this love of God manifested in Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are also invited to make the ministry of becoming the hands and feet of Christ in this season. So my sisters and brothers in Christ, let us walk the Lenten pilgrimage together in love. In this season, and as we pass through the wilderness times in life, let us focus on God's redeeming and sustaining love more and deeper. 
His love will keep us, bless us. Amen. Amen. Can you memorize if you are able? Thinking about the message, we are singing hymn number 377, It is well with my soul.
has peace of Christ to each other. It's be with you. It's be with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you and praise you for this church. We praise you for the snow, Lord, outside that has whitened things up and everything is so pretty. And Lord, now as we go about asking for prayer, Lord, we just thank you and ask you to be with us in the next 40 days. Help us journey through life. Help us keep our eyes on you, Lord. And as Pastor Troy has handed out these little crop pocket crosses this morning, Lord, help us put one in our pocket and reflect on you each time that we put our hand in our pocket and just think about what you are doing for us and how you're walking with us and just being with us this whole time, Lord. Now, Lord, I want to lift up the family of Marguerite Corbett, whose dad passed away this week. And for Madeline Grisafi, Lord, who we've been praying for for months, who passed away also this week, Lord, from cancer that she had battled for a long time. So, Lord, now we lift up the prayer joys and the concerns of the people of our church. Uh, prayers for Sarah. She is going for her cancer surgery this week, and from there they will determine the course of treatment. We're praying just for radiation, obviously, but I just ask that we more be with her and guide the doctors and all prepared. This is my prayer. We're here on prayer. Huh? Prayer for Georgie Prosser has cancer in, in a remission, but pray for the bag that he has to wear and that goes into the back, that he gets a lot of infection. So I ask the Lord just to touch him and heal that. This is my prayer. Tony? Um, continued prayers for Kathy, for Christy, for Marilyn, for Linda, for Sue, that so many that has cancer. Just Lord, be with them, touch them, give them the strength that they need, and continue prayers for Tammy. This is my prayer. Rich? Uh, prayers for my mom. Uh, for healing. Uh, she had a mishap with the cat and got stitches. So. She did what? She had a mishap with the cat. Got the stitches. cat? Yeah. The cat scratched her. Yeah, she got an infection? Uh, she's getting medicine. Okay, we're going our prayers. Uh, prayers for me as I await the phone call that I need so I can start my radiation and get it started so I can get it over with. This is my prayer. Mm -hmm. Debbie? Continued prayers for Cody. Cody's cancer Lord, as we lift up all these requests to you, Lord, we ask that you would intercede in every situation. Touch every one of these requests, Lord, and we thank you and praise you for what you're doing in each one of our lives. Now, Lord, we say the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us out of the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory of God. Amen. Please rise if you are able, and we are singing closing hymn. The face we sing, 2105. Jesus tempted in the desert.
the scriptures say that we need more than bread for our lives. We must feed on every word of God. Go, feast on the words of the Most High Creator God. Be overwhelmed by God's goodness and let your life be your praise until we meet again. Amen. Amen.